Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shen Plays. I am your host, Shenner, and I'm here with Avak today for some more Factorial Beginner's Guide. How's it going, Avak? It is going very well, and welcome back, everyone. We do apologize for the, the short break. Uh, scheduling a uh, time where we could both record was a little bit uh, difficult for various reasons, but we are back now. And as you can see, we've not been idle in your absence. Look at all this beautiful concrete. Yeah, concrete. We talked about it a couple episodes ago about how we want to put down some pavement. You can see we still have some pavement up here by the train, but next to the pavement is concrete. And I've got some in my inventory right now. It increases your walking speed by 40%. And it may not sound like very much, but <laughs> later on, we're going to get some armor that increases walking speed too. And then com oh, yes. combine that with the, with the concrete, you just start running around like the flash. It's fantastic. <laughs> Just to quickly cover, the pavement is inferior to concrete in its stated purpose, that is to increase walking speed. I like to have like pavement kind of separators along the walls and also just purely for aesthetics around the train lines. It's just kind of visual cues. But you'll notice up here that you can't, well, or at least you usually can't, run it right up to water. There's usually a little buffer, so you do have to bear that in mind. It's, it's not a bug. That's actually how it's how it's built. You can't run the paving all the way up to the water's edge. Unfortunately, you do have to have like a two tile gap. I just think of it as more aesthetics then. There's your shoreline. Yeah. There you go. So this is all done via this small four, four factory set up here. We have our old bricks, which is what we used to make the original pavement. Uh, we didn't really yep. build too much of the pavement because we wanted to do more concrete, but this is what you use to make concrete. It's a simple recipe of iron ore, water, and bricks. That's it. Simple, simple. So those are going yep. into two, two boxes. We're just letting them fill up so that we can, I've got 500 in my pocket now. So I could lay down a whole bunch right now. I'm sure, I'm sure Avat could as well. Yeah, yep. well, why don't we? Yeah. It does help in a lot of ways. And remember that when you're on a conveyor belt, it does stack. So the walking bonus you get for walking with the conveyor belt stacks with the fact that you're on, a, on concrete. Don't ask why, it makes no sense. But it is pretty cool all the same. Run! Uh oh. Now, the way that this works is you can use plus and minus to increase the area that right. you're placing this down with. So you can have it really precise, as in one tile. Or you can have it all the way up to one, two, three, four, five. It's 10 by 10. 10 by 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a huge amount of, of area there. I'm just going to go down the, the main bus and concrete. throw down a whole bunch of concrete. Now, as he said, it does stack. So if you're running along the conveyor belt, it adds to the speed of the conveyor belt. It's awesome. And if you're running reverse on the conveyor belt, you can actually run pretty quick in the reverse too. Now, to remove any concrete, you do actually need concrete in, in your, your inventory, inventory to remove it. So yeah. I've already placed it down. Oh, actually, I think you can use brick as well, but you basically need a tiling surface to, to place it down. And then with it in your inventory, you just press le uh, right click instead of left click. Now it will take from the same area. So if you've got it on 10 by 10, it'll, it'll clear all of the bricks from a 10 by 10 area. But when you're placing it down, it's instant across the entire brush. So if you've got a 10 by 10 area selected and you press left click, you'll place 10 by 10 or 100 pieces of concrete. However, when you're lifting it up, it'll pick it up one tile at a time. It's very fast, but it will be one tile at a time from the top left to the bottom right. So. Bear that in mind, it's a lot longer to lift it up than it is to place it down. Yeah, just like anything, which is good because you don't want to accidentally right click and remove an important part of your factory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Not so, that I've never done that before. No, no one's ever done that. We're all perfect in this world. <laughs> so one other thing we've done is we've added a purple science factory. So I'm gonna pick up my cotton yes. candy here and we're gonna show you how the purple science works. Now it's, it's, okay, it's cool. almost, it's almost the most complicated thing in the game. I, I don't want to scare you guys on purple science, but you've been through us with red, green, and blue science. Yeah. So purple science, surely you're ready I mean, for it, I, right? I would say, I would say it's right it. up there with building the rocket. Oh yeah, it's harder than the rocket by far. Yeah. All right, so, so there's our blue science factory, which includes like half of our base. That's blue science. And uh, purple science is this, it, it's, it's a box. And the recipe is, alien artifacts that's it that's it you just put your cotton candy in the box and uh there you go that's purple science wow Oof. i broke it i broke a sweat the there most anticlimactic i broke a sweat difficulty drop off that you could imagine 
<laughs> red science. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's not actually complicated. It, it might take a little bit of puzzling the first time you make it for the very first time, but after that, it's, it's almost automatic. Green science, uh, you've got to build a few more intermediary steps, but again, it's generally fairly simple. I guess Blue the only science. thing... The only thing to remember about purple science, I'm sorry. The only thing to remember about Go purple ahead. science is it's a 12 second recipe, so it takes a while. Yeah. Um, but it does produce uh, 10 artifacts. 10 beakers per right. um, alien artifact it uses. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, blue science, to make blue science, you have to build entire different industries to support making it. Yeah. So, you know, a really big step up in difficulty. And then purple science is literally <laughs> a box. Yep. Artifacts go in, 10 beakers come out. You know what it is, Havak? It. It's a reward for getting to purple science. <laughs> it's your reward. It's like, yep, there you go. Good job. Pat yourself on the back. But yeah, you get right. 10 beakers out of each alien cotton candy. So it's pretty good uh, recipe ratio as far as the output to the input. All right. So next thing we've done is we've we've prepared our factory for solar. Well, sort of. I mean, we've, we've prepared building the solar, but we haven't pr prepared an area to construct it in the in the actual in the actual world map yet. We just built our little factory setup for it. So for Shen, solar... very yeah. kindly off camera, just put all of this together. So thank yeah. you very much, Shen. Watch it all break and catch on fire. Our base is destroyed. And so down uh, here we have accumulators, which is a simple recipe, batteries and plates. So we've brought some batteries and plates up here. Done, done. Nice and, and then simple. up here we have solar panel setup, which is copper, steel, and electric circuits. Thankfully, the solar panel recipe takes 10 seconds but the electric circuit recipe which is you need 15 of them here it only takes half a second for the circuits so this is this this should be enough uh electric circuits for these two solar panel factories no problem yeah but now that we've had these built we're gonna let them build up several of them before we actually put them to use because you need like a lot of solar panels to make a difference so we're gonna have to clear out an area to really use this i maintain that uh, one of the best areas for us to expand into would be the one just south of the oil. Yeah, I think that's great. Because it's, it's, it's a fensible location, so we could expand without too much concern. And you know what? You know right? what's even better? What? It's full of trees. We get to shoot trees. <laughs> you want to shoot some trees? You 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 are a very, very frightening, <laughs> frightening individual, Shen. But before we go to that, there is one more thing that we would want to research, and that is actually the substation. Uh, electric energy distribution. And the reason why the, the substation is going to be good is because I, I believe with the substation, it gives a very, very wide reach supply area. Mm -hmm. and 14 by what, 14. Yeah. So whereas the accumulators, um, sorry, the the electric poles that we've been moving up to, we've got the medium electric poles, a seven by seven, I believe. This is literally twice as wide an area. Right. Uh, or four times as wide. But we can draw power from many, many more uh, solar panels with this. Just one of these in the middle, and then a load of solar panels around the side. As you can imagine, solar panels are, are about the same size as a factory. So you do need to have a lot of um, Space. energy distribution logistics just to draw that energy in, unless you've got substations. So I think that should be the next research, really. Sure. Substations sound good if we're going to do a solar field. Yep. Right. Now, one thing we haven't already done, and uh, we've been building up to for a little while, combat shotguns. Oh, yes. Military 4 has unlocked combat shotguns, and the recipe is fairly simple. Some steel, some iron, some copper, and a little bit of wood. Now, what's the difference between this shotgun and the regular shotgun? Uh, the regular shotgun has a shooting speed of 1 plus 1 second. The combat shotgun has a shooting speed of 2 plus 2 seconds. So, it fires a lot faster and like, a lot faster also has a damage bonus 20 percent damage i'm yep. sold thankfully you don't need to build a gun for each ammo you build so no <laughs> you only need one gun Ooh. yeah and it never goes bad unlike your uh, unlike your what are they called steel axe that'll still go bad yeah so we're going to need to set up somewhere that'll actually make shotgun shells for us at this point. That's true. Have we unlocked purple shotgun shells? Or we still have the regular ones? Uh, still the regular. We've still got the regular ones, unfortunately. Piercing shotgun shells, they are really important because we are going to start getting into territory where the enemies, they have a lot of damage mitigation. So we need the armor piercing 
a tribute to really get through that. That will be purple science, though. So that's why we've needed to wait on that one. We need to get armor, peas, and shells. Then it'll be copper and steel, which basically we can build off what we've got down here. We can just have a shotgun, uh, shotgun area built up along him, probably even mirroring our piercing um, regular bullet factory. Sure. Honestly, just, um, I I'm think that'd be fine. Place down a tier two uh, factory over the top of the purple science, just to speed that up just a little, little bit. Sure. Oh, there we go. Um, and while I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the railway. Now, we've got a, a couple of plans with the railways and, and how we're going to expand because we are actually starting to hit resource shortages. Yes, Iron our, Ton is Iron not Ton, yes. long for this world, unfortunately. It's not a matter of it getting attacked. It's simply running out of iron. It's no longer so irony as it used to be. But we're spying other spots on the map, including three big chunks of iron to the southwest. Yes, yeah, basically all around Stoneton, which has run out of stone. So we're thinking of repurposing Stoneton. How did we come into... up with these silly names? There's no iron in Ironton. There's no stone in Stoneton. Well, I think we should keep the original name, but it'll be Stoneton, and then in brackets, New Ironton. New Ironton? Okay. Or we could just change Stoneton to New Ironton. In fact, that, that would be fine as well. And then what we're actually thinking of doing, just, just for... Just for the sake of using trains, really, we'll have the area that is roughly where Stoneton is right now as a large um, sort of uh, loading area that is being fed from the three different iron nodes. And they're all coming into the, 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 the one place in Stoneton, and then that iron ore will be ferried up to Awesome Source City. Now, what we're thinking of doing with the, the way that we unload that is actually having... The train line that we've currently got going to Stoneton coming up and curving all the way around to the top. Yep. So we'll so. have two trains working at that station, which will probably involve a little bit of uh, changing of that station, actually, but it should be fun. Two trains. We're going to need a light for that, aren't we? Yes, we are going to need uh, signals. Ooh, the lasers were going mad there for a second. This is why we really need the accumulators is right now when the lasers all start firing, the lights start flickering, as you can see. It's like, oh, all the power is going. Yeah, that's, that is one thing I'm not sure if we covered, but lasers do receive priority for, for energy from your, yes. your factory. So if, if you're getting attacked, your lasers will get as much energy as they can handle, uh, or as much energy as you can produce before anything else in your factory will receive it, which is great because you typically want your factory defended more than anything else. Yeah. Okay, so our substation research is done. I think the next thing I wanted to go for it's actually cars. I think that might be fun. Oh, you're thinking about going for tanks, are you? Well, I'm looking at all these uh, bases that are around us, and sure, combat shotgun is going to help us out there, but tanks. Tanks, man. You know what you do with tanks? Have we discussed tanks at all? No, we haven't. We've discussed cars a little bit, but uh, no, we haven't really gone over tanks too much. Well, tanks can just run over enemy bases. Like, literally plow them down. It's because yeah, they're tanks. It's... It's quite fun to watch, and it's quite fun to do. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's have a look at the research we need for that. What do we need for tanks, then? First thing, of course, is cars, automobilism. Okay. And so the next we'll thing is that. tanks, and that's that. Very quick research for automobilism. Yes, but we're probably going to want to research got... some... We're probably going to build a little factory for some cannon shells, because the tanks yes. can fire their main weapon. <laughs> yeah. Now, the tanks have two weapons, I believe. They have mm -hmm. a machine gun on the top Correct. and a cannon, uh, like a main Correct. cannon for and it. You, you fill the machine gun with your armor-piercing shells, and then you fill the yeah. cannon with either of these two shells that are available. What are they called? They're called cannon shell, and they're also explosive shell. Yeah. Now, explosive shell does much less um, physical damage, but has an AoE and a little bit more explosive damage. But it's worth noting that... Um, the regular cannon shell does a lot of physical damage. Mm -hmm. It does still have a little bit of explosion. It just doesn't have an explosive area, really. Yeah. But it has a crazy high piercing power. There's, there's really nothing that will withstand a blow from that. Their armor is, is as nothing before the might of the cannon shell. And the tanks are pretty beefy, too. You're not going to lose your tank at the drop of a hat. No. 
<laughs> you can lose it though if you get too cocky. <laughs> I will put that warning out there. Don't, no, don't never. overestimate the bike. <laughs> never. Or rather underestimate them. Well, right, in the where meantime, we set up oh. the uh, production for these because it's going to take a, a fair old bit to start making these shells because they need explosives. And we haven't looked into explosives. Hmm. So what do we need for explosives? Are they are they a completed recipe yet? Do we have the recipe? Do we have uh, the yes, knowledge? Yes, we do. We do. We need sulfur, coal, and water. All right. Where is it in the crafting menu? It is under the intermediate product on the fourth layer down, just to the uh, right gotcha. of the circuits. Oh, we get to use sulfur again. Nice. We haven't it's used sulfur good. in a while. No, we haven't. Well, I mean, we, we threw it down. We just kind of ignored it. Like, yep, there's your sulfur. <laughs> yeah. Now, what we might want to do, since it requires coal, and this is one of the only places where we've got an active coal line going, mm -hmm. we could... How much... Uh, we've got very little petroleum gas, actually. Mm. Well, that's simply because we haven't been using enough light and heavy. So the light and heavy are getting full. I could make another tank area for light and heavy, and that would give us some extra petroleum gas for sure. Ah, yes, that, that would possibly be wise. Also... At some point, I will be going over over the um, programmable circuits of Factory, for example, because you can do things like uh, have them monitoring the available availability. For example, right now, we are capping out because we can't store the light oil. We can't produce more petroleum gas because we've got nowhere to put the light oil, but we're cracking our heavy oil into light oil, which is compounding the problem for us. But you can effectively make circuits that have conditional statements that would shut down the power to these areas if that were the case. Mm -hmm. Little things like that are actually actually quite quite nice. So as the light oil is, is getting full or uh, the heavy oil is getting full, it would like, toggle on the cracking of heavy oil to try and manage that for us. But right now, as Shen is doing, a very simple solution is just to make more light oil storage. Well, one of the problems we've had with this series is not so much the logistics of where we want to put things or what we want to actually do each episode, but we've mm -hmm. run into problems like we have so much time running where we're trying to figure out um, how we want to organize things and how we want to show you guys different things that during that time, these tanks are filling up. And if you're yes. playing this yourself, yes. that probably won't happen as quickly <laughs> as we've had it happen. I'm just going to yeah. put down some extra so storage for now, just so we don't have to worry about the uh, light oil too much. For the time being, we can come back to this and clean it up later. But for now, this should be fine. Yep. Well, that's that's perfect. Um, in fact, yeah. If we put that there, and then I can. Uh, oh no! Don't. I wouldn't hook that up. I would hook it up to this tank up top. Um. Sure. Uh, it's largely going to be exactly the same thing, though, for right now, because we don't have pumps limiting the flow. True. But you're right. True. Uh, we can restrict the access right there. Yeah, because we can just um, we can just remove this pipe whenever we want. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, so that should allow some more petroleum gas to be made. Mm -hmm. Now, what I was going to suggest is if we have the coal and either we make more sulfur production, though I think that might be unnecessary. But if we have, we uh, can, we can find out. split the sulfur <laughs> and then run it down, and then just have the explosive manufacturing around about where I'm stood right now. I would say. Yeah, sure. Why not? Unless, okay, perfect. Yeah, the the other option is we could just put the salt. We could put the explosives up here, next to the next to the. Um... um. Yeah, actually, there's no reason why we would need to mess around with moving the sulfur elsewhere because we can easily just bring the, the coal, coal up. Yeah, no, that's a good good point. I'll uh, crack we have on lots with of room that here. then. All right, let me see what the recipe is. Made in a chemical plant. Well, I've got four of those, so let me put those down on the ground. One, two, three. And I know there is absolutely no reason why I should be replacing all of these yellow lines with red ones. I just want to. You're a madman. I know. Crazy. And there we go. I have no mind. I should do them all, alas. But then, you know, I'm going to go and grab some more. Little by little, I am getting rid of all of the basic belts in this factory. <laughs> I will get there eventually. Does that make you feel better? Not having any basic yeah. belts? Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, it does. It does. 
Well, it vastly, vastly superior to the AVAC of yesterday. <laughs> right. Okay. We've actually got a lot of uh, the red transfer belts. That's good. Great to see. Those gears weren't put to waste. Indeed. Right. How are you going to set this up? So you want the sulfur moving along there. Do you want just the, the coal and the sulfur to meet? And share a line, for example? Sure, if you would you like. Easily do that. That works fine. Oops, I need to. Oh, I've run out of iron. <laughs> I load. I did as well, actually. Yeah, I've got none. Sorry, my friend. No iron for you. <laughs> I've got a, I've got so many things on me that are made of ridiculous amounts of iron. It's just we've made all of our factories do it. So. Uh, we will bring this up and then across. Sounds good. And this will go underground. No problem. Mm -hmm. There we go. Perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to run out the middle? Uh, I was going to put the explosives out the middle. Oh, uh, wherever. Oh, we need oh, to put oh, it. oh, I know what you can do. I can move it over. I can use long inserters. Perfect. Yep, sure. That way we can have both, both uh, belts up the middle. All right. All right. Right, but yes, there's many, many plans at the moment. I am probably, well, we're probably going to spend the next episode, I imagine, just doing a bit of combat, just clearing out some of the biter bases that are actually becoming a little bit annoying. They're not really a threat, but occasionally they do manage to break something, and it's just frustrating to have to go and repair. <laughs> um, but beyond that, I'm really looking forward to playing around with expanding our train network and actually going to the point where we've got multiple trains running on the same line or at least pulling into the same station because that necessitates the use of various things like um, signals and it's just fun to play with that sort of stuff. I agree. So hopefully we'll have uh, a lot more fun content including not only trains but cars and tanks too. Did you ever build cars, Abak? Like actual car uh, cars. I used to do that quite a lot, actually, when you could shoot out of them. Mm -hmm. In the ye olde days, you could yeah. do proper drive-bys <laughs> in your cars. I became quite <laughs> proficient at doing rocket drive-bys on an alien basis. Grand I just have a rocket launcher just circle strafing around, around their base much faster than their biters could keep up. So that I'd have this long, ever-growing tail of biters following me. It became a, like a little game of snake after a while. I had to tr avoid crashing into my own tail. And you but, just killed uh, them all. Yeah, I just I just rocketed their base until it was <laughs> dead. It was very fun. And then they took away being able to shoot out the window of your car. And at that point, cars just lost all meaning for me. I think the other problem with cars is they're very fragile compared to a tank. So if you're running into yes. objects like yes. trees, you take damage when you collide with things. But in a tank, the damage is very low. But in yeah. a car, the arm, the armor in a car is so weak that you'll actually explode your car pretty quickly just bumping into things by accident. So I kind of feel now like it's cars... worth noting that you don't take damage for that. Like Correct. Yourself. It's 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 all the all the vehicle. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that too much, but it is still something you want to be uh, be aware of at the very least. Now the question is regarding tank shells. What is required? We need plastic, explosives, and steel. That's actually super, super useful because we've got explosives here, plastics here, and, well, we can bring down steel. We'll uh, have to do that I will probably bring down in the next some steel, episode, yeah. I would say. <laughs> would you like to lead us out? Oh, I don't know. I guess so. Are you guys had enough Factorio for one day? All right. We'll, we'll be back soon, though, for, for more <laughs> things, including tanks. Uh, we're going to kill some biter bases. And we may get started with trains very soon here. Train signals. Yeah. Oh, man. I imagine the next episode will largely be focused on building ammunition for our tanks. Building our tanks. Mm -hmm. Also, possibly, I'll set up... Uh, Running over Avac in a for... tank. I, I really hope not. <laughs> they, much like a train, if they hit you, you die. Just a heads up. Times. If you bump someone with a tank, you're probably going to kill them. Yeah, yeah, All right. It's, it's well, very bad times. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this uh, Beginner's Guide to Factorio. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Take care, everyone. <laughs>